Good day, mga idol! It's me, Mark Sinang of BSANT 1-2. In this video, I'm going to share to you all about the radial engine, one of the reciprocating engine or piston engine of an aircraft. So, probably there's a big question to your head right now. So here are the questions we have to discuss. The first question is, what is radial engine? And how did radial engine started? What are the basic parts of radial engine? And what is it made of? How does a radial engine work? How unique is radial engine to the other types of reciprocating engine? And lastly, what are the advantages and disadvantages of a radial engine? In the first place, there is something called the rotary engine. Before the radial engine was introduced and trusted, Early rotary engines were used in World War I aircraft. They were air-cooled with cylinders arranged circularly around a crankshaft fastened rigidly to the fuselage. The propeller was attached directly to the circular frame on which the rotating cylinders were mounted. But before the war, the first radial engine was constructed in 1901 with five water-cooled cylinders. But it took almost a decade for the radial engine to be considered trustworthy for flying. Support was boosted from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics 1921. Declaration that radials were more reliable and efficient. By World War II, radial engines had fully replaced rotary engines as the standard and provided much of the aircraft power. And so why radial engines are preferred is that the radial engine is generally much more reliable. This is because it features a shorter crankshaft, simpler design, and create less vibration. The major difference between the radial engine and the rotary engine is that the radial engines have pistons that move in a reciprocating fashion that cause the crankshaft to rotate. In rotary engines, the crankshaft does not rotate. But radial engines do have downsides too because everything is subjected for development. There is no such thing as perfect. All engines have its own limit. It is just a matter of time there will be new learnings and development to the engines we have right now. <laughs> okay, so now, what are the basic parts of a radial engine? The first is cylinders. It is a circular shape in which the piston moves and the value mechanism is seen. The second part is pistons. It transfers the force of expanding gases to the rotating crankshaft with the help of a connecting rod. The piston has a tight movement in the cylinder and the piston rings ensure the minimum clearance in the piston and cylinder. The positions and the movement of the piston is top dead center and bottom dead center. Meaning top dead center, the piston is on the top of the bore and while the bottom dead center is at the bottom of the bore. The third part of a radial engine is connecting rods. It works as an arm lever and transfer motion from piston to the crankshaft. The fourth part is spark plug. It delivers the electric current and ignites the air fuel mixture in a combustion chamber. The fifth part is valve's operating mechanism. The open or closer of the intake and exhaust valve at the proper timing. The operation is provided by pear-shaped cams or rotating cam rings. The six basic parts of a Rachel engine is the crankcase. It is the housing of the crankshaft in the reciprocating engine. In radial engine, we also have intake manifold. With long curved pipes or passages, is used to send the fuel air mixture to the cylinders. We also have exhaust manifold. It acts as a funnel and is used to collect all the engine's emissions. And if you guys are wondering why is there no camshaft included, is it because radial engines do not have a camshaft? Instead, they have a cam ring and all of the cylinders shares in one cam ring. The cam ring has two separate lobes which are connected. One row for intake lobes and the another row is for the exhaust lobes. Okay now, let's go to the part how does a radial engine work? Just like any reciprocating engine, it follows a four stroke cycle. The first stroke is the intake stroke. That is where the downward moving piston sucks the fuel air mixture through the intake manifold in the intake valve. As the piston begins to move up, it compresses the mixture on the compression stroke. Right before the piston hits the very top, the spark plug fire. Those sparks, it starts burning the fuel air mixture, causing the gases to expand and forcing the piston back down on the power stroke. And then the crankshaft starts spinning the piston back up to the top, forcing out the burned fuel air mixture in the exhaust stroke. If looking out a radial engine from behind or from the pilot seat, 
you'll find the number of cylinders in clockwise order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looking from the front or the propeller side, you start from top to counterclockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A radial engine, it follows a specific firing order. Radial engine is an alternate firing cylinders. A radial engine always has an odd numbers of cylinders. This is because of the firing order. It skips every other cylinder. It fires all the odd. Next is it fires all the even. It would be 1, 3, 5, 2, 4. Let's go to the question. What is the difference of radial engine to the other types of reciprocating engine? And how unique is radial engine? A radial engine works like any other four-stroke internal combustion engine. They differ from inline and horizontally opposed engines in their firing order and the way they connect to the crankshaft. Each cylinder has an intake, compression, power, and exhaust stroke. Four-stroke engine is called four-stroke because four up and down motion are needed to complete the cycle. In the first stroke, the piston travels downward as the intake valve opens in a mixture of air from the atmosphere and meter amount of gas from the electronic fuel injector enters the cylinder. This is called the intake stroke. On the second stroke, the piston travels upward compressing the air and fuel to make highly combustible mixture. This is called the compression stroke. At this point, the spark plug fires, sending the piston downward from the expansion of the air and gas mixture. This is the combustion stroke. The fourth is the exhaust stroke, as the piston travels upward and exhaust valve opens to release the burnt fuel air mixture. When the piston reaches the top, the stroke, the intake valve opens and the cycle begins all over again. It takes one and up and down motion or two stroke of the piston to create one revolution of the crankshaft. RPMs are revolutions per minute is how many times the crankshaft rotates within the minute. A radial engine consists of row or rows. Why? It can be double radial, one at the front and one at the back. Crankcase is in the middle. Number of cylinders can be either 3, 5, 7, or 9, meaning to say odd numbers to get the perfect balancing of the engine. Now, let's go to the last part of this video. The advantages and the disadvantages of a radial engine. The main advantage of a radial engine is the favorable power to weight ratio because of radial engines were designed to have one or more rows of cylinders arranged in a circular pattern around the crankcase. They have one crank throw per row and a relatively small crankcase, resulting in a favorable power to weight ratio. The next advantage of a radial engine is the cooling system. Radial engine is in frontal position. The cylinder arrangement exposes a large amount of engine surface to the air and this air-cooled design provided for even cooling and smooth running. And now, the disadvantages of the radial engine is the torque and gyro effect. Because of the strong power of the engine that causes fast spinning propeller, it causes the propeller to flapping situation, the propeller tries to pull away from the engine. The next disadvantage is the carburation process. Carburetor can be seen under the engine, and the radial engine is frontal. The problem here is the high tendency of fuel icing when at a lower temperature cold countries. Although we are in the Philippines, we have worldwide manufacturer, so it is for commercial use. The next disadvantage of the radial engine is the lubrication. As we all know, lubrication gives cooling system to the engine. The problem here is the design is in the radial or circular. When lubrication oil is applied, all lubrication oil will be at the bottom. So there are the possibility of corrosion and chipping of metals. So when there is friction, there is possibility of ignition and tendency of detonation. The next disadvantage is exhaust. Because of too much exhaust manifold, the design of the radial engine is bulky and the pilot view is lessened. Three hours later.